Here are some of the, here are some of the myths that, as you know, are always put about in this country and elsewhere. We're told that they're fighting for the security and the survival of our nation. We're told that they're fighting for democracy, for bringing it to others, for humanitarian rescues, to, f uh, to oppose dictators, to get rid of a man like Saddam Hussein. You see, right there, let's pause on that one a minute. How many of you have heard that, that part of this was to fight to get rid of Saddam Hussein? All of you have heard that, I know. How many of you have heard that it was the United States that put Saddam Hussein in power? Oh, this is a politically literate audience. Well, let me tell you, there are millions of people out there who don't hear it, and it's not their fault, because you can't hear it. You did not hear it on ABC, NBC, CBS, and um, what's that other one? I can't remember. Um, uh, so, in 1968, the Iraqis had a democratic popular revolution. They overthrew the autocracy. They kicked out the British and American oil companies. They nationalized their oil. They nationalized their economy. They were developing a viable, communitarian, different kind of society. The CIA picked out very early Saddam Hussein. His first gig was an assassination. When Saddam finally came to power as head of the Ba'athist party, he went out there and he exterminated every either exterminated or drove them into exile or drove them underground. He exterminated every constitutionalist, every democrat, every communist, every progressive, every reformist in Iraq. And when he was doing that, and he was torturing people and doing horrible things, when they say this about him, that's, they're telling the truth. What they leave out is that it was the CIA that put him in there. They leave out that little detail. They don't tell the people that. When he was doing that, when he was at his worst back in the 70s and early 80s, he was Washington's poster boy. They couldn't get enough of him. Saddam Hussein, he's pro-West. He's our ally. He's uh, pro-American. They gave him aid. They gave him bacteriological stuff to use against the Iranians. They sigged him on the Iranians because they didn't like Iran's nationalizing their oil and all that. It's when Saddam Hussein, Hussein started committing economic nationalism, when he got out of line on the oil prices and the oil quotas, when he made it clear he wasn't going to privatize his economy, when he started developing his country and committing economic nationalism, as opposed to what you should do in a ne neo-colonial empire. In a neo-colonial empire, if you are a faithful servant of that empire, you are a comprador leader. That is, you lead your people, but you respond to what Washington wants. You say, come on in, boys. It's all yours. Take it. The, the natural resources, the oil, whatever you want. Our people get out of line. We'll crack them down. You just give me the aid. Give me the guns. Give me all that and I'll take care of them, and you take care of me, take care of my brother Jose, my cousin this and that, or whatever, if it's Latin America, or if it's Africa, or Middle East, wherever it might be. Um, and there's no environmental protection laws here, there's no minimum wage to worry about, there's no child labor laws to worry about, there's no um, occupational safety laws, you don't have any of that trouble cutting in. This is capitalism working at its best. This is the way the free market is meant to work. None of those regulations, none of those kind of things. You don't have to pay your workers uh, paid vacations. You don't have to pay them pensions. You don't have to worry about medical care or any of that stuff. This is straight free market, all on your terms. You can pay them 18 cents an hour, and you'll get richer and richer. It's all yours. That's, those are the kind of leaders who are called pro-West, staunch allies of the US, pro-American, and the ones who challenge that, the ones who go against that, the ones who pose an alternative way of using the land, the labor, the natural resources, and the markets of the country, those are the ones who are called anti-American, anti-West. What does that mean, anti-West? Um, like Cesar Chavez or Gaddafi for a while and such or Castro, 
It doesn't matter if they're communist or Christian socialists like the Sandinistas were in Nicaragua or, um, or even, or even right-wing militarists like Saddam Hussein in, uh, in Iraq. <clears throat> So they tell us these things, that what, this is why we're there, to save people, to introduce them to democracy, to help them teach the poor, little, itty-bitty, apparently not very bright Iraqis self-governance, teach them how, to, how they can govern themselves. It's a 5,000 year civilization. We're going to go in and teach them some things. This is the civilization that brought us writing, the alphabet, um, a, lot of, a lot of the early science and such um, very bright, resourceful people. But, but, they, but they, they, haven't learned, they haven't learned what we are going to be able to do now and teach them. Again, leaving out what? Leaving out the fact about the 1968 revolution and the country they were building on their own if they had been left and given an opportunity to build that country. <clears throat> 